yeah, we try to draw a picture of a city where human beings are at the center of attention. Today, we have the chance to talk to Jana Rasch from the Wuppertal Institute in Germany. The Wuppertal Institute is a think tank very strongly promoting a more sustainable, transformative approach to development in Germany. And in this podcast and videocast, we will talk to Jana about the approach which they have developed. It's called Local Economic Development 4.0. And she will provide us an insight about this approach, which is very strongly trying to strengthen more resilient and more sustainable transformative development initiatives within cities and regions. We are looking forward to this reflection with her. Good morning, Jana. Good morning. It's nice to see you and having the chance to talk to you. For us, it was from Meso Partner very interesting to see the approach which you developed or which you co-developed at the Wuppertal Institute, which is called Economic Development 4.0. We as consultancy was very strongly working on local economic development. We thought that would be related to industry for zero, to digitalization and the whole issue on how can we make local economic development more internet related. But when I looked into your approach, I found a very different perspective. It was not so much on the question on digitalization, but on very interesting elements, which from our perspective are very innovative uh, when we think about local economic development. And um, yes, from that perspective, I, I would like to give you the chance to introduce yourself, maybe also the Wuppertal Institute, and what is the focus of you working in this Wuppertal Institute? Yeah, thank you. The Wuppertal Institute undertakes sustainability research and uh, we would like to um, work for a transition to sustainable development. And we do this at different levels. So we have projects at local level, at national and at international level. And um, all our research is focused on problems in the area of resource, climate and energy. And we try to find a connection between these problems and um, the relation to what's happening in the economy and the society. And we try to find um, solutions. And um, a big problem is um, that economic growth and wealth is um, yeah, related to natural, um, natural resource use. And we try to decouple this. So um, we try to have prosperity also in the future while consuming less nature. So, so that we can live on our planet also in some hundred years in the future. Just to come in here, uh, from my perspective, the Wuppertal Institute was always in Germany, uh, uh, was always known as a, as a, a kind of um, a lateral thinker, an organization, an institute, a scientific perspective Uh, which really try to, to identify new ways of development. Uh, and at the same time, uh, also really uh, challenging traditional perspectives, huh? how economic development should work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and to do so, we try to find innovations. So we try to find innovations at these different levels to, yeah, to find solutions. Yeah, and we do this with a lot of people now. <laughs> <laughs> How many started, people are you uh, at, the, at the institute? At the institute, we have 250 employees, and among them, we are 140 scientists at the moment. Yeah. There is, a, is this approach of economic development uh, 4.0 reasons for developing this. Uh, what was, is the background? Maybe there are two, three reasons which you would say were really relevant why you came up with this idea. Yeah, maybe you can find two books and one project. <laughs> so one book is a book uh, which is called Zukunftskunst from Uwe Schneidewind. The English word might be future literacy. And there he describes seven transitions. And this is a bit, or this became a bit the framework of uh, our research in the Wuppertal Institute, these seven transitions. And um, all these transitions are interconnected. And uh, we, with uh, 
Economic Development 4.0 go to the urban and the industrial transition. This is where we, you can find our project more or less. But this is also connected to resource consumption and changes in consumer behavior where you can find the other transitions. The second book is uh, Ecoroutine from Michael Kopatz, who is also the originator of um, the project Eco Economic Development 4.0. And maybe now the, the last thing, the third thing was uh, um, the project. This was a project running for some years or some years ago called Alternative Economies. And this was coordinated by Mona Treude. Yeah, and what's funny, uh, oh, I'm happy about it, that now uh, I work together with Michael Kopatz and Mona Treude in the project of Economic Development 4.0. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but this was, was the three reasons. So the book Zukunftskunst from Uwe Schneidewind, Ecoroutine from Michael Kopatz and the project Alternative Economies led by Mona Treude. Let's move a little bit into this, into this approach itself. Um, because I think it's very interesting to see all the, the projects also which, which the Wuppertal Institute is doing. So there is science on the one hand, but at the same time, it's also very practical oriented, practice driven. Uh, now in this economic development 4.0 perspective, what is the vision behind this approach? Yeah, we try to, yeah, we try to draw a picture of a city where human beings are at the center of attention. Yeah, so we try to uh, create um, places where people can meet, network people, and uh, yeah, we invite everyone to become active in their city. And what we do in the project, we help the helpers. So our vision is a city uh, where people would like to, work, to work, live. So a city who is worth living, but that is also economically resilient to external shocks like uh, natural disasters or pandemics, as we can see now with COVID-19. And yeah, we would like to create cities where people want to live and where their needs are satisfied. Just to get an idea of that, what are main elements so that we, that we can grab it better? Um, what are the elements of this approach? So maybe you would say now these are only cute, small, nice little things that I'm talking about. But um, our focus is on people who, uh, who really uh, do something for their city. Like, for example, they run repair workshops, they organize alternative housing projects, such as housing for help, you know, this maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they get involved in their neighborhood or they run little stores in, in town. Housing for There's Health, can, a, you just, can you just explain it for the listeners? Housing for Health means... So, yeah. So, if you, maybe you're a student and uh, you're looking for a new apartment, but uh, you don't have so much money. So, you, maybe you, can, you have the possibility to live together with an older person who needs some help. So, you pay less for the apartment. And at the same time, you help the person uh, where you're living with in the same house, for example. So this is a little bit the concept. So, but all these initiatives um, have in common that um, there's a commitment of the city's citizens for the city. So everybody really like the city where they live in and like to, to contribute to the welfare and prosperity in the city. I can remember that there were some elements that you had this nice mind map where you uh, focused on these different elements. But if I understand it right, you talked about uh, active citizens. Um, I think that's also very much related to local production and the idea that you have got shorter value chains where you try to really keep the development and the processing of certain products into the, into the uh, location or the closer region. Uh, is that right? Yeah. May I just uh, say some words on the mind map? We try to structure all these ideas a little bit. And um, we found like five business areas where we structure all the initiatives uh, under it. And first was sustainable enterprises. So maybe some stores who sell really sustainable products or their business model is sustainable, for example. 
The second business area was sharing. So, but uh, yeah, sharing like you share bicycles, you can share apartments, you can share, yeah, nearly everything. Sharing economy element is here. Yeah, but um, here we would like to be uh, very uh, explicit because we don't think about Airbnb and Uber and all these things uh, people think about when they think about um, sharing economy. No, it's really um, the, the basic thing to share things. And in the neighborhood, it's not about making big business about the ideas of other persons. I might just say this like this. So it's about really sharing in the neighborhood, in the city, bikes or some things you need in the garden, for example. So they don't need to be produced five times, but only one time, for example. So this was the second thing, sharing. The third um, business area is local production. So community supported agriculture is one thing uh, for in this um, thing or when farms they um, sell their products directly some have some little boxes uh, coming uh, directly from the farms to their apartments for example so this is what we uh, think about when we think about local production but not only uh, things to eat also i don't know there are people in cities they produce um, little things you use uh, in the bathroom or in the kitchen so there are more and more little um, yeah, initiatives from people who produce things you need. Uh, you can have a look at what you can find in your city. So the local producers in your city, this is the third point. The fourth uh, business um, area is uh, social enterprises. Maybe you know these social stores where people uh, can buy um, already things from other people already used. Less, like second hand. Less or yeah, for example, uh, second-hand stores, but there are some special social stores. They, own, they do not only sell things uh, to wear, but they also sell um, furniture and so forth for people who don't have so much uh, money, for example. So in this um, social enterprises, we try, to, um, we try to collect all these ideas um, in a town when people try to support other people. Also, for example, when we talk about uh, repair cafes in a, in a town, it's not only about repairing something, it's also a social thing. So people meet and come together, talk together, get to know each other. So this is also part of uh, social enterprises. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can find more here in the, in the mind map. And the last thing, is about sustainable finance and uh, alternative currencies. So maybe you have heard about time banks, local crowdfunding or regional currencies. And this is all clustered in the business area. Yeah. So just to give you a, a picture how we structured um, the mind map. So that means that, that it's, if I understand it right, uh, from, from what you said now, um, it's the, the focus is not so much in these five areas. It's not so much only on, on profit, but it's very strongly trying to link economic elements, economic development aspects with social and environmental aspects. Yeah. yeah. Um, and why, why is, this, is this necessary? Because it's not, it's not um, in the traditional local economic development perspective. Is that not integrated there? I mean, I ask that a little bit provocative. Is this approach, would you say, is it very different or does it close a, a kind of an, an element which was not considered in the past? If we lo looked at these uh, economic development agencies um, from which we uh, hope um, that these, all these things are um, yeah, supported, um, we couldn't find it. We could find some ideas so some of them already started to support this in town, but we saw that this is so important that we need really a, po a person dedicated for it um, because this is not something you do um, as add on to your other tasks. If you look at uh, what they already do, these business development agencies at the moment, they have to pay their person for what they do already. And this is really something which is complementary. 
Is it integrating or taking a, a, a more open perspective, look, looking also integrating citizens and also integrating social aspects of, of localities into consideration, which might not be only related to economic uh, growth and economic, economic success, but also which has a lot to do with, uh, let's say, factors for living and life quality and community. Yeah, but not, not only. If you look at what happened now with COVID-19 <laughs> in spring and uh, when all the international rail chains were cut off, so you need a kind of resilience of your city uh, to be competitive in the end of the day. So I would say it's not only about these small, cute, nice little things uh, we are talking about, um, but this is we talked about them to make them bigger, to make them more professional, to, um, yeah, and to make them be integrated um, in town and maybe, um, yeah, this, this are future business models, we think. So now it's often voluntary work, what they do. But I think we need all these initiatives um, for our local economy in the cities. And that's why we hope uh, that these economic development agencies promote them further. Yeah. And um, I think you, you mentioned this term of, of resilience. I think that was for us very interesting. You take a very pers different perspective on thinking about uh, resilience and how you make localities, but also economies more stronger, more uh, not only sustainable, but also more re resilient to be uh, more able to re react on certain shocks also. I think that is, that is an important element which we found very interesting. And you mentioned now, again, you said that already, um, this approach, you see it more as a complementary approach to the traditional uh, economic, local economic development perspective? Yeah, we clearly understand it as a complementary approach to what economic development agencies already do. Yeah. We saw that you have got already some cases in some municipalities, this approach is very strongly promoted also strongly with his understanding of a well-being perspective, how can we strengthen uh, and strengthen the resilience of the locations in different ways. I know that one city which is close to my hometown, it's called Osnabrück, uh, where you are very busy working on this integration. Um, what is your experience in general working with municipalities? Uh, is it easy to integrate this perspective? Um, how do they react? How do these municipalities react when you are coming with this perspective? Maybe let me first explain a bit uh, about the structure of the project and now the follow-up project. So we had one uh, pilot project close to where you're living in Osnabrück. And uh, we had, we call it pilot phase from 2018 to 2019, where we implemented the project in Osnabrück. We had uh, one person <laughs> who is called Economic Development 4.0 Manager. So this, we, we named it like this, or you call it Project Manager for Sustainable Regional Business. And this person in Osnabrück was Christina Rother. And she brought together a lot of existing initiatives and, launch, uh, and she launched uh, actions like a pop-up regional store. So in this store, um, all these local producers I was talking about before came together in, a, in an empty store. This is another point. When we look into cities now, we see a lot of empty stores and we could try to find ways um, how to revitalize them. For example, all these local producers, as they did in Osnabrück, they took one of these stores and called it pop-up store. And uh, they presented all their products for some weeks there to sell them. So this was good because they, they used the empty store and they met and they, when they met, they had, few, few, uh, they had further plans. So now they are talking about to create a, a joint label for regional products in Osnabrück, for example. Now they have a network uh, of regional products there. So this is what she did in Osnabrück, for example. Or she brought together repair initiatives and the, um, with people from the trade sector. So they have corporations now. So you see there are also like 
yeah, tradition, in the traditional business areas, people who are interested in what these initiatives do in town and they start uh, corporations. Or I talked about uh, community supported agriculture and they sometimes um, they, they need a place where they deliver their products and people come there and get the products from them. This is called a depot. But these farmers are very busy in producing their products and they have no time to, to look for new depots. So th this is one task, um, what uh, Christina Rotter did. So they looked for a depot for them. And uh, actually she found a place, which is the Osnabrücker Unverpacktladen. Unverpacktladen, this is an unpackaged store. So now people come to the un package store from, for the products from the community supported agriculture farm but at the same time they discover the unverpackt laden so this is exactly what we want to do in uh, economic development 4.0 these synergies so all these initiatives they come together the Christina Rota the person the economic development 4.0 manager she tried to network all these initiatives bring them together and to make them more professional yeah, these are lots of, of stories. So this is what she did uh, for two years in Osnabrück. We also have a report on our website about this. We can link the website as well. It was so su successful that now, uh, since the beginning of the year, we have a follow-up project in th three new cities. It's in Wuppertal, Witten, and Witzenhausen. Your pilot project, let's say, takes off now. Uh, and also takes off in a way that, that it, it created more attention and, and more municipalities are interested in that. Yeah. Um, what are the main challenges? Are there certain challenges which you face also when it comes towards linking your perspective and your activities with the traditional ways of doing local economic development, often very strongly focusing on really promoting uh, existing businesses in the locations, traditional businesses, maybe doing some more start-up promotion, so where do you see uh, also challenges to, to, to make this link? Because I find that very interesting. Yeah, this is one of the tasks we try to, we also try to find out now in the follow-up projects mm. because we only have experience in Osnabrück now. Now we go to Witten, Witzenhausen and Wuppertal. And the thing is, some business development agencies, they are interested, but as I said it before, there are, personal restrictions so they don't have the capacity to do all the work and now we are happy now because we can finance all these persons in the business development agency um, within our project but in Osnabrück for example the business development agency took over uh, Christina Rota and now they finance uh, her position so this is one one success so once they saw the uh, advantage of what Christina Rotha did in Osnabrück, they saw that maybe it's, a, it's good to have a person like this in our agency. And now we see um, in Witten, Witten, Witzenhausen, Osnabrück, we will see how this will, uh, will uh, go on further. But on the other hand, we already have a lot of other agencies calling us so that we collected a list of them and now we are trying to, yeah, trying to organize an exchange meeting for them. So on the one hand, it's maybe not so easy for these persons uh, to be integrated in the agencies. But on the other hand, there are lots of other agencies uh, which are interested in our work. So I think first it's important to see what these persons really can do at the agencies for the initiatives, but also people who run little stores in town. It's not only about initiatives, it's also about little enterprises and as I thought, sustainable uh, business models. And especially after what we lived this year in this COVID-19 pandemic year, um, more and more people, and we also can read it in the newspaper, more people talk about regional production. And it's, it's important. It's important to live in, in, a, in a great world together, I, can, I would say, but all the things that you can produce locally should be produced and consumed locally. 
So it's mm -hmm. it's not about being against the others, but it's to, to focus on what you can do at your city. It's uh, very strongly about personal restrictions. Um, but do you feel also that you have to do a lot of, um, let's say, awareness creation on these issues which you are promoting? Uh, is there also a work necessary on working on mindsets within a lot of business development agencies to say, look, there is innovation potential here, there is local production and economic potential here, which can be linked even with um, social aspects, but also climate resilient aspects? This depends a lot of um, the agency, agency you are talking to. So some of them are very open. We try to do some research in the, in the first project also about the development of these agencies. And some already opened themselves to new topics. Uh, they talked about creative cities, for example. So when uh, enterprises go to a city, why do they want to do their business there? And yeah, sometimes you find a good place, it's attractive. But the point is also, is the it, is it city attractive to people? Then it's also attractive to enterprises. So they also looked at so-called creative cities where you can find a lot of culture and art, musicians and so forth in the city. So there is already a little change in mind and what they thought about is important to be Yeah, to install your business in one city. And this is where we, we took this point and said, okay, but now we have to go one step further. We need a resilient city. And that's why we need to support all these um, initiatives and enterprises in, uh, in these five uh, business areas of, of economic development 4.0 I described before. We have not the time now to go into detail, but I think uh, you gave already a good introduction um, and I see also that there is, I see it in, in our work often also in, in agencies, but also in, in municipalities with mayors, that there is a, a, a tendency now also to think more about how can we make our location more environmentally attractive, linking that with, with economic aspects. You mentioned this COVID-19 background also now with reflection on how can we strengthen uh, resilience uh, when it comes towards production. Um, we have also looked into different kinds of approaches like the donuts economics, where they have now implemented this idea of, of strengthening a sustainable approach in Amsterdam and after other cities. So I find it very interesting that there is a, seems to be also a certain movement now, which tries to uh, shake a little bit the, the local economic development agencies, but also cities to think about new ways of doing things and do it in a, in a way which is innovative but at the same time, which really very strongly contributes to resilience. What are your plans? What are your next steps? At the moment, we at the, uh, at the Wuppertal Institute try to organize peer-to-peer -peer learning between Osnabrück and the other uh, W, so Witten, Wittenhausen, Wittenhausen, Wuppertal cities. We facilitate mutual learning between them. And uh, yeah, we see there's a lot of more attention, so we hope This, our follow-up project is called Rollout. We hope this is not our last rollout. Um, <laughs> but the overriding long-term goal is to have federal funding for local economic development 4.0 managers, so for these peoples. Like maybe you know in Germany there exist um, municipal climate protection managers in cities and there is a federal funding. And we try to get in the future, maybe a program to get uh, funding, this funding for this economic development 4.0 managers in all the other cities in Germany. And maybe we also find ways um, to, yeah, to put this in other, other countries in the world. I see a great chance also to, to, to share experiences also to, to other communities where we are working with uh, in other countries. Mm -hmm but even also maybe in, in the, within the European Union to, to bring this, this different perspective into, into consideration to create awareness on that. Uh, because from our perspective, it really contributes to, to a different way of thinking on innovation, thinking on economic development in a, more, in a more, let's say, sustainable way, but also taking this resilience perspective uh, into consideration, which, which very strongly depends on local dynamics huh, between different kinds of stakeholders. 
So um, maybe as a last point, when, when people would like to read more about it, we will put some information on the website, linking to you. Do you also provide capacity building on this economic development 4.0 approach with these five elements? So at the moment, we are really, uh, yeah, we are in action with the, with the cities at the moment. We try to organize this mutual learning or this exchange meeting with further interested agencies now. And there we will, we will do some capacity building on this. And uh, we do a lot of presentations at meetings, I would say, not only at research conferences and so forth, but we go to people who invite us and talk about uh, what we are doing. This is also part of what we are doing in the project. So if there's anybody interested, just, just call us and uh, let us know where we could come together. So I'm sure that we will, uh, we will find a lot of people who are interested in, in getting a better understanding. We were only able now to, to very briefly introduce it, but there is reading material there and hopefully there is also a chance to, to contact you directly, uh, maybe learning uh, really from also practical experiences how this approach works in, in reality. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jana. I wish you all the best and uh, I hope that we stay in contact. Yeah, thank you. I also hope so. Mm -hmm.